Greetings, YouTube. Today I'm going to be talking about The Wild Trees um, by Richard Preston. Now, I've actually read one of Mr. Preston's books in the past. I didn't realize that until I started to read this one. I enjoyed it so much, I looked to see what else has this guy written, in case I, had, I, I would be interested in reading one of his books. And he has written the book The Hot Zone. It's part of actually a three-book series dealing with biology. Um, I don't believe I've read the other two. It's the third one. Uh, what's it called? The, the Devil and the, the Demon in the Freezer? That sounds vaguely familiar, but The Hot Zone deals with disease. Um, at one point, I read quite a few books dealing with bio, with, with uh, specifically about viruses and, and, and infections. It's one of the reasons I am so critical of the films 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later. Um, and uh, The Hot Zone was very good. Though it's kind of a shame because when I read it, it was many years ago, um, apparently I wasn't as a sophisticated reader because I don't think I appreciated the style of Mr. Preston because I gotta tell you, this is a beautifully written book. The Wild Trees is is lyrical. It's it's just a joy to read the book itself. His command of language, um, his and his ability to write about people is uh, is wonderful. Now I've been very critical in the past of authors that I felt were frustrated novelists when it came to biographies, that they were projecting themselves into the story, that they were attempting to um, tell a fictional story through the lens of telling someone else's story because they couldn't get a deal to sell a book which was purely fictional. Now what's fascinating is this guy wrote is writing a book about trees, but in the process of writing a book about trees, he writes about the researchers that, that, that are involved in the trees. Um, interestingly, could, a number of the researchers in this are amateurs. I mean, it was refreshing to see how much real-world um, contributions these amateurs made to the research on, on uh, redwoods and uh, Douglas firs, the really big trees. Um, in the process of talking about these researchers and the researchers' families to a certain degree, as he wanted to give some background to these people, um, he writes these little biographies over the course of the, of, of, of the book. Um, I almost said novel there. And what the beautiful thing is, is I heard the voices of the individual researchers as he's discussing these people and their lives and how they came to become the the people that researched the wild trees. Um, and it was almost jarring when he spoke directly to me, the reader, because he's writing a nonfiction book. So it's completely appropriate that he speaks to me, the reader. It was like almost like he was breaking that fourth wall. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a guy here. There's a guy writing to me. Um, and then at near the end of the book, he talks about his own experience with giant trees. Um, because he gets to know these people and gets, to, and gets to the point where he actually becomes a person that climbs the trees as well as the researchers. That's how they research. And there's a little picture in there of two people climbing a tree. Um... And, again, I heard him. And I can't explain how it was that each individual seemed to come through so clearly, but they did. And he, and he, and he told their stories with such grace and such, such subtlety and such honesty. And, and, and sometimes brutal honesty. Um, some of these people were very honest with this guy. Um... It was just a. It was just wonderful. It really was. Um, so, on that gross grounds alone, if I ignore the fact that this book is about giant trees, <clears throat> I recommend this book. But the book is about giant trees, and the parts of the book that deal with the giant trees, the whole book essentially, is also wonderful. Um, to hear how little we knew about giant trees up through the 80s and 90s, even into the even into our um, our century here in the 21st century, it's fascinating to see that there was such biodiversity in the tops of those trees and that entire layer, the canopies of the trees, that was, in some cases, utterly unknown. I mean, there's this vast stretches of biological riches that were floating above our heads because no one had just taken the effort 
to climb up into the trees and really do a thorough, proper form of research. You know, you go up there and you catalog every single branch and every on every single tree in a grove, and you all the creatures you can find there, all the plants that are growing up there, all the the the, the animal types are growing up there. There's an entire um, environment, e ecology up there. That is up in the trees that they don't find any place else. Soil that is gathered in the in, in, in the crux of the trees. There are fire caves up there that were created by forest fires uh, 200, 500, 1,000 years ago. I mean, this is fascinating. And if you're a gamer and ever want to throw yourself some elves up into a tree, this is a must-read book. If you want to have something that looks even vaguely realistic. This gives you a real sense of what you could do in a science fiction or fantasy setting with giant trees like the like Avatar did with what is it? I can't remember the name of the big blue people um, but you know who I'm talking about the, the science fiction movie um, and uh, I mean, you, you want to know what you can do with trees like this here's a good example of how they're handled in the real world and it would be so inspirational at least it is to me, was to me I'm looking, oh, they, I was reading this going like oh this is just so great I could do so many cool things in science fiction or fantasy with giant trees after having read this book. Um, and I'm happy to say that my wife is interested in this book, so I'm going to pass this on to her. Um, and uh, I will be also, when she's done with passing on to someone else, because this is a book that needs to be read. I don't, I don't need to hoard this book at all. Um, but Richard Preston, The Wild Trees, um, the guy is just very, very good. If it wasn't for the fact that I have too many books, I mean, I have an entire six foot bookshelf. There's a bookshelf just like this one across the room from me which is full of nothing but books I need to read. In fact there are books piled on top of the bookshelf because I've been very bad when it comes to not buying books. I feel miserably at not buying books. Anyone who's watched my bargain videos can tell you that. Um, if it wasn't for that I'd go back and reread Hot Zone because I would want to know was his style as good then as it is now and was I just an unsophisticated lout that didn't appreciate good writing when it was available to me. Because I wouldn't be surprised at that. There have been times in my life when I was not a sophisticated reader, when I didn't appreciate what I was taking in, um, and in retrospect, I should have. But, you know, I can't have everything. I can't even have hair. Um, so, if you like trees, if you like beautifully written books about the researchers that have thrown their lives and put themselves at risk, both, both financially and academically and, and, and physically, to do their research, um, this is the book for you. Just really well done.